On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, a crane operator's view of shipping. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCaglano, a chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science here at Campbell University, former merchant mariner and an instructor in maritime industry policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. So there was a story out from Insider, used to be Business Insider, and it's been making its rounds about some videos of a crane operator, container crane operator, moving boxes. And I thought I'd take this video, take a chance and break down that video and talk about what's going on in it. I also want to extend an invite out there. If you are a container crane operator, if you are working the port, especially on the West Coast in LA or Long Beach or retired, and you want to come on and talk about what it's like to work those cranes, hey, leave a comment, leave a note, email me. My email is on the show page, mercaglianosal at gmail.com. Feel free, love to get some of that firsthand perspective of what it's like to work out there. But let's get into today's episode. So this is a story here. It came out uh, on November 28th. Uh, Grace K did this. And the title video shows what a crane operator sees while loading containers into a cargo ship. And it's got a couple of images right here. But the real heart of this is down here in the body of it. But I do want to make a couple of notes here. One of the things they talk about here is the role is precise and physically demanding requiring operators to move at least 25 containers per hour. We'll talk about how long it takes to move these containers on and off a vessel because that's one of the big constraints we're seeing right now. Come down here. This is the first of two videos they have on here. I got the volume on here, so I'm going to go ahead and let this roll. What you're seeing here are these gantry cranes or these portainers. These are the large gantry cranes that are being used. This is the SSA terminal. I think this is in Long Beach. They said it's either Long Beach or Seattle. Uh, this looks like a potentially a Zim vessel along the, uh, the dock right here. And we'll take a look at it. So these large gantry cranes right here, you see they're on tracks and they'll move side to side and they, ain't, they line up on the cells and they're used to offload a cell. So let's go ahead and let this roll. Okay, so we're gonna be going to work here in just a little bit heading up in this big crane, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. So one of the things that uh, he talks about here is the process. Now, this is pretty high up. You're about 100 to 150, 200 feet. Depends on the crane. Now, these cranes are designed to handle certain size vessels. Because of the height and the reach of the cranes, this deals with the width of the container ships. And one of the things that's really important is as container ships get bigger, not all cranes can handle container ships. Ship out here. A little shaky video. So. Okay, there's my operator's cabin right there. That operating cabin rolls Head forward. On. It's right, right above here. the crane that picks up, uh, excuse me, the spreader bar the gates. that picks up the containers. A good view of the container yard back there, container stack. Into stacks. the cabin. Okay. This entire cabin moves. Here's my crane operator's cabin right here. This is where all the madness happens. You'll notice the seatbelts right there to be strapped in, leaning forward quite a bit. You need a comfortable chair. You're sitting there for quite a long period of time. Right here on all these controls. <laughs> and here's my view outside. So anyways, um, got to get ready to go. So I'm going to pause it right here because I want to do a couple of things. Number one, what you're lined up here is, is cell number one on this vessel. It's the cell most forward. Here's the bow of the vessel. Here is the forward cell. Now, a couple of things to notice here, and this is fairly typical. You'll see a mix of 40, 45, and 20-foot containers right here. So these smaller boxes right here. You'll see in cell one and also here in cell two, those are 20 foot containers. Those are TEUs. So when they measure a size of a vessel, it's measured by TEUs. That is the size container they're talking about. You'll see you get twice as many containers here as you do, for example, in cell three that has 40 foot containers. So just because a ship can carry 10,000 TEU does not mean it has 10,000 containers on board. More than likely, it has somewhere in the range of between 5,000 and 10,000, probably more toward the 5,000 because you tend to load more 40 foot boxes than you do 20 foot boxes. Another thing to notice here are the names. Uh, one of the things is containers 
used to be owned by the shipping firm. Some of them still are. So for example, you'll see Zim, Hopogloid, MOL on here. There were some other ones back on the uh, after side of the vessel that you saw. Typically, container liners will haul any containers. It depends on the contract. But a lot of container lines have gotten out of owning their own boxes. That's why you see less of them. And you tend to see more boxes with no names on them. Just a quick note here, you'll see a couple of oddball containers right here. This container is shorter than the others, but also longer. It's sticking out. That's a 45 footer. You'll see those put on the top stacks. Sometimes you'll see these 45 footers, another one up here, a blue one up here. You can see it off the side here. Uh, what you don't see are the reefer containers. They're typically white. Uh, they are toward the center of the vessel, back toward the after part of the vessel, closer to the engine compartment. They have to be plugged in because of the requirement. And this crane will operate. I'm gonna show you how exactly these cranes operate in another video. But before I do that, I wanna make you aware of how the port operates. Now I can spend hours talking about this, but I'm not going to. So I have no worries about that. But I am gonna recommend you over to a site and that's this, Port Economics Management and Policy. It's an online book that is really the textbook in port operations management. And Jean-Paul Rodrigue, I've talked about before, and uh, Theo Noteboom are the authors of this. They have done an interactive book. You can get a hard copy of this book, but you can also get the interactive. It is online free for you to go get to it. And one of the things they have in here is uh, an entire book. And if you look at the contents, they talk about uh, port and maritime shipping, contemporary ports, port terminals, governance, competition, performance, policies, development, markets, and case studies. This is chapter 3.4, container terminal design and equipment. So for example, it talks about the layout of container terminals, talks about the equipment. So for example, I talked about the portainer or ship to shore crane. That's what this is here. It's interactive. You click on the pictures and boom, here they come. You get a great little uh, ex explanation about it. You'll see, for example, that these cranes come in different size, Panamax, they can go out 12 to 13 rows, all the way to ultra post Panamax, 23 to 24 rows. And understand one of the things that's happened with container ships, and I believe I have an image here, yep, is as container ships got bigger, when we hit the post Panamax, we hit vessels of about 300 meters in like, that's about almost 900, almost a thousand feet. The ultra large container ships, ships like Ever Given, are 400 meters, 1300 feet. In truth, the length isn't the problem. Actually, the longer a container ship, the better it is to load and offload because you can get more port gantry cranes up against it. The problem becomes the width of the vessels. You'll notice here in post Panamax, you're looking at vessels that have about 17 bays. They're about 15 cells across and nine above the main deck and five below deck. Those 17 bays, those are those rows I was talking about. And you'll see as you get bigger, you get more and more bays until you get down here at the very bottom where you start getting into these mega container ships, 24 across with 24 bays. It's the 24 across that's the problem because it takes you a long time for your crane to cycle from the dock, lift up, and you gotta lift up higher now because your containers are stacked higher. You're now 18 containers high as opposed to, for example, a Panamax that may be 11 or 14 containers high. And then you got to roll out all the way across the stack. That's what slows you up. And that's, that's a big issue. But this chapter here, if you're really interested in, in, in understanding how it works, it does a great job. It shows you, the, uh, uh, for example, the, uh, the operation of cranes in the yard. This is from the Long Beach New Terminal. This is the Long Beach Container Terminal, where they have multiple stack cranes to be able to, once the containers are offloaded, they're put in these large stacks. And these large kind of gantry cranes, almost like Jenga, move in and sort the containers and pull the containers out necessary for the trucks to be loaded on. You'll see they're on these little bomb carts coming in. These are automated in the port of Long Beach. You will not see that in the video we're going to watch. So this is a really big, interesting element. And I really recommend this. This chapter, again, it's all broken down here. You can kind of delve into this. It's got some of these great graphics. One of the, this is a graphic for what happens as container ships get bigger. 
What are some issues associated with it? So you'll see right here, less ports able to accommodate. That's why we're going into LA and Long Beach. Reduction in ship call frequency, fewer ships come because the ships are bigger. Longer intraport navigation. In other words, you're staying in port longer. Longer berth space and berth time, that's true. Reduction in crane productivity. Your cranes are not as effective as we will see here in a minute. Then showing the max size of container ships, more than 12,000, those are the big ones. One of the things we saw happen here is on the United States is ports have gotten bigger, especially on the East Coast. There's been a big growth in the East Coast. Why Gene Soroka has been touting this issue about why has 10 of the $11 billion recently been spent on East Coast ports? That is to accommodate these bigger vessels because the Suez, excuse me, the Panama Canal has gotten bigger. 2016, the new lane opened, and now you can bring vessels, Neo Panamax, 14,000 TEU vessels through, and these East Coast ports can now accommodate them. And you see that around the world. And then this talks about liner shipping uh, efficiency. It, it talks about which ports are more efficient. The larger the yellow, the more efficient they are. You'll see here in China, in Asia, and actually in Europe, ports are much more efficient than they are in the United States. Even though the countries are using them, US and China are the, some of the biggest users along with the European states for it, but we are not as efficient. Let's uh, head back to the video here. So the second video they have here is a great one. And this is an operation from within the cab. So one of the things, and I'll go ahead and let the video play here and get some audio going here, is you're seeing the moment after you dropped a container off this looks like potentially a matson vessel so here is the spreader coming up it's extended out for 40 feet and now it's cycling back and what you're going to do is lower this back down and pick up a new container you'll see the container here on one of the yard tractors these are not tractors that go in and out the port these are yard tractors the line up on the container You'll see somebody working down here to make sure that everything is clear. Cell five, cell five, please. They're going to tell them where they need to go. You see the port tractor rolling out. These guides coming up here help you guide the corners of the spreader onto the container. You lock in on the four corners of the container. There's uh, turn bolts there that lock into the container. And now you see the container being cycled in to the cell. The cell guides line up. You have to line up directly. This is why these operators are always leaning over because they need to line up specifically. The ship needs to be perfectly trimmed. It can't be down by the bow, stern, port, or starboard to get in there. You have to lower it all the way down. I want you to take a, a, a note there. There's the container hitting the bottom right at about the one minute, 30 second part of the video. Now the container has to be unhooked and that's a flip of the switch. The turn, uh, the, the quarter turn bolts will turn. Up comes the container crane. Now notice we're just a few cells in here. One, two, three, four cells in here. You'll notice these arms coming up. These arms uh, come up. They were up before, now they're lowered back down. You'll also notice here that the uh, bomb cart, the container chassis is not in the right spot. They're not lined up. You'll hear a warning whistle here. Hear the horn, that's from the container crane telling this guy to line back up, you're not lined up. He can't move the container crane left and right. He's locked in on that cell. Once he gets the go ahead, he's good, he's locked in. He'll get lights indicating that his four corners are locked in. You'll see him take up the slack on these wires. The wire slacks will come up. This is your control cable right here that's hooked into all the electronics. Your yard cart pulls out and now you're coming up. You see the guides coming up here in the corner. They'll come upright so that they can get into the cell. Right here, you're coming into this, coming into your cells. One, two, three. This will be cell four right here. You gotta line up directly on it. Gotta make sure you're within the tolerances and then lower down to the bottom. This is a small container ship. This is not one of the big container ships, probably a three, 4,000 box vessel tops. You see them cycling down. He's gonna go all the way down to the moment when you hear the thud that's hitting the bottom of the deck. 
These are the very lower scores coming up. See that thud right there? Three minutes and 20 seconds. We started at one minute and 30 seconds. So one minute and 50 seconds to cycle in there. Now that took a little bit long time because they had to readjust the cart, but almost two minutes. And if you start thinking about the math of this, you start getting an appreciation for how long it takes. You also notice he's only loading containers in one at a time. He's not picking one off and loading and then putting one back on. So if you have a 10,000 box ship, you need to offload 10,000 boxes in the port of LA and Long Beach. What makes LA and Long Beach very unique is that nearly 80 to 100% of all containers are offloaded from a vessel in the port of LA and Long Beach. If you look at the East Coast, maybe 20 to 40% is offloaded in any one port. And again, here's an issue where they're not lined up directly. This slows up the process. Since you have to offload so many containers in LA and Long Beach, this magnifies the problem. You only have so many gantry cranes that a ship can work. Again, ships are at their max length, about 1,300 feet. You can get four to six gantry cranes if they're available to work a ship. But as you get longer, as the ship gets wider and you gotta go up higher, this could take not two minutes, but three minutes potentially, four minutes. And again, when you start talking about a 10,000 box container ship, let's do a little math here. Again, my degree is in history, not in mathematics. 10,000 box vessel, if you can do let's say 30 containers an hour, that's 333 hours. If you have four gantry cranes working on this, that's 83 hours. That becomes three and a half days. Three and a half, now that's three and a half days to offload. You still have to load back on. And one of the things that we've been seeing, there was a great story just out by Lorianne LaRocca that the Biden administration is finally talking to the ocean carriers and the operators, it's the sound that they're talking to the ocean carriers and the operators about fully loading these vessels when they depart. Ships are leaving LA and Long Beach right now, not fully loaded. Why? Because they don't wanna take the time to refill some of these cells. Because when you offload one of these cells, the priority now is to offload the next cell, which means you have to move this gantry crane. And that takes time. And if it takes you three and a half days to offload, it's gonna take you three and a half days to load. And that's just for a 10,000 box ship. And that's assuming 24 seven operations with four gantry cranes, and you're moving a container every two days. You get to see why this process is taking so long. This is not a fast and efficient process. I found the video really interesting. I hope you did too. I hope it gives you a little insight to what's going on on the offload of the vessels. This is just from the container crane operator. Once you get that container off and you load it on those yard carts, then those containers have to be stacked. There needs to be coordination with truckers coming in and railways. Still a lot of movement that needs to go on in the yard. But that's how those containers come on and off. It's a very interesting system. Again, those corners of the containers have those twist locks. And all it is is a twist lock that locks those four corners and allows you to lift those containers and drop them back on. When you reload the containers back on, when you go to the deck above the main deck, you are down in the cells, what we showed. But when you get up on the main deck, you have to still put straps on them. You have to put cross wires on them so that the containers don't fall off. If you ever played with Lego and you stack your Lego blocks single stack, they can fall apart. Usually what you do is you block them like Lincoln logs. Can't do that with containers. So what do you got to do? You got to cross stay them. But that takes time too. It takes more time to load a container ship than it does to offload. It's easier to throw those, those stays off than it is to put them on. And that's one of the reasons we've seen ships leaving the port of LA and Long Beach not fully loaded. Lorianne LaRocca just had that report talking about the Biden administration is finally, finally talking about this, requiring these ships to leave the port loaded. Again, port of LA and Long Beach can mandate this. They control the pilots. They can sit there and say, we're not gonna issue a pilot until your vessel is fully loaded. What's happening here is the carriers and the terminals are pushing the vessels out. There are mechanisms of control here if the port and the federal government are willing to use them. I hope you enjoyed the video. It gives you a little insight on operating a 
container crane. I've never done it myself. I've been loaded by them, but I've never operated one. But if there's a container operator out there wants to come on, let me know. Happy to have you on. Uh, one of the things I like to do is get some firsthand perspective out there for our viewers. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Hit the bell so be alerted about new videos when they get out. Share it across social media. Leave a comment. And if you can, if you can, contribute to the Patreon page. That allows me to spend the time and effort I need to do videos like this. So until our next video, the Sal, signing off.